the farm. It's sad. There's nothing growing. But despite that, it is officially spring because we got our spring 2021 uh, bulk bulk flower wholesale order from Van Nort, and I'm so excited to show off what's in this order that we got to do it as a real video here. This is, this ain't no this ain't no live content. This is like you got to see it real good. Last year, we didn't get this order until into April, which was a little bit late for us because a lot of this is dinner plate dahlia tubers that we grow up to sell for our seedling sale in May. So this year, Ian hopped in his truck and he drove all the way down to Vancouver uh, because one, he loves me, and two, we needed to get those plants as early as we possibly could. So we, we filled his truck to the brim and now we have it all in the garage. The first thing that we'll start with is our anemones and ranunculus. This stuff, ideally, I would like to get in the fall and going into next year, it's gonna show up in the fall for me so I can start it earlier, but Today, we got it, we got it soaking, we got it getting started, and look at these. Can you believe how beautiful these are? Uh, what we have is, I have three cases, and I think these had about a hundred, a hundred each. And these are the amadine, and these make excellent cut flowers. So just amazing, amazing flowers, longer stems. And so we have amadine white, amadine marshmallow, amadine salmon. And then I got a peony, a peony style ranunculus in a mix of colors. And then finally, look at these anemones. These are caramel in the pastel mix for the coloring. I can't wait. I can't wait to try these out for the first time this year. Even though spring isn't the ideal time to get it, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> fatty, fatty, fatty. I've already opened up all of my boxes. I had about a case. I had to dig through so I could find those ranunculus that I'm working on today. And this week, I'm gonna be busy because almost every single thing in this order needs to get potted up into a bigger size or the dahlias, they need to get into their one gallon pots to get ready for the seedling sale. So we have some work, but you guys, it's so exciting. The, I mean, just, just look at this wall, right? Like the, the blend of like the colors, it's, it's gonna look pretty incredible, but we're not gonna start with the dahlias. We're gonna end with the dahlias because what we're gonna start with is what I'm the most excited about. And that is all of the perennials that I ordered up. I ordered a lot for me of perennial flowers, things that I'm gonna get into the ground this year. You know, I stuck to my normal list. They're nice and drought tolerant. They love sun, they love drainage. Um, but these, I'm gonna plant them this year and they're gonna be with me for, for all these years to come. So this is the stuff that I'm really excited for. It's not gonna do very much this year, but next year, the year after, it's gonna really produce. What I have here is yarrow, and I bought three different colors. I bought a yellow, an orange, and a red. The names of the colors is moonshine, terracotta, and paprika. And look at these, these are like ready to get into the ground right now. I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with them. It's still a little bit too early, but I can't wait. I can't wait to get these colors. I currently have a big patch of yarrow already, but it's all pinks and whites, you know, more of those softer, more romantic colors. And I'm really excited to have these punchy brights to work with too. Early in the season, the yarrow, the yarrow comes on so early. The next one I have here is is a Shasta Daisy. This variety is Sante and it's a white double and it looks so pretty in the pictures. I have a single white double plant and I really liked having it to play around with. It was so romantic and fluffy. I really wanted to get this yellow one that they had too. There was a few varieties of the of the Shasta Daisies that I originally had on my order. Um, a, a lot of what I have 
in here is limited from what I try to get. We were limited when we did our order. Um, some of the stuff I tried to buy, they were already sold out of when I did the order. And then we were limited again. Um, we, we didn't get a few of the things that we thought we were gonna get. It's just, you know how it is. It's, it's one of those years. You, you just, you can't get everything this year. It's growing, it's, <laughs> it's ready. In this box, we have some really exciting stuff. Okay, let's, oh, uh, this is Ian's little present. This is a bag of 15 peonies, and the variety that we got is Coral Charm, which has just, you know, such, such an incredible color. The peonies take a while to get established, and Ian, Ian's having his own special garden this year, so I got, I got this for him. We can put a few into his garden that can stay there, they can be for us to enjoy, and then we can get a few going, getting established, so that in the future, we'll have these to sell it's we have big plans for you know 100 or 200 peonies in the future um, this is just a, a taste of what's to come for some of our other orders and oh it's it is ready it is like growing like crazy all this stuff is really gonna need <laughs> it's this is my job today pot all this stuff up and it's it's definitely it's definitely gonna need it one of the other things that I'm doing this this year, you know, so I got this patch of yarrow that I'm putting in. Um, another big cluster of stuff that I bought is sedums. And sedums, you know, perfect plant for me. Drought tolerant, you know, loves the heat of the summers, cold hardy. Um, these, you know, I put these little plants in this year and then they're gonna keep dividing more and more and more. Um, I think I have five separate varieties. And so the way you harvest these is you can start to harvest them in the summer before the buds open up and use them kind of as a filler or later into the fall, they open up and they're gonna have th some of these really fun, um, you know, purpley, and reddish type colors. Uh, they, they look like a succulent flower almost. So they, they're very tropical looking for, you know, us, us Canadian gardeners. <laughs> um, but they also, they're very cold tolerant. This is something that could survive the flower, could survive the frost. So, you know, that, that's gonna get me closer to being able to maybe sell something for our Canadian Thanksgiving, which is in the end of October, and we've usually already killed everything. So I'm, I'm really excited to get these established and see what they're gonna do for me. Uh, the variety that I have in this one is Autumn Joy. This, this is a super classic. This is, uh, it's been around forever. Oh, and then this one, this one's Autumn Fire. So, you know, similar, the Autumn Joy is so great because it's got this height, it's super hardy, it grows really well. And then the Autumn Fire, you know, very similar plants, but then, you know, this fun uh, contrast in the colors. The other thing I have in this box is that other yarrow I was talking about. Okay, more boxes. What's this one? Doesn't look like there's very much in here. Brilliant. These ones must be very smaller plugs, but whoa, look how much growth it has. I can't remember what this one looks like. I'll have to, I'll have to get a picture for this one. I mean, I'm assuming it has a really good color with a name like Brilliant. And then I also have Matrona. And if I remember correctly, this one is very tall. This one, the, the flower stem is even taller than the Autumn Joy and the Autumn Fire. And then the one I'm absolutely most excited about is this one here. This is neon and the color on it, it it's, it's very, I'm, I can't wait to see it with my eyes, see what it actually looks like. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting to see how much these are growing, how happy these plugs are. They're gonna be really happy to get into a bigger space and you know get some, get some light going again. There's good stuff in this one. I forgot about this stuff. Okay, the ultimate, like Ian and I are obsessed with this flower, you know, just as like a landscaping flower. We've been in love with it for years. And then it also dries so good and it's blue. Like what, how many things that you grow are actually blue? Um, so what they are is, uh, I, have, I probably have to say the Latin name on this one. Okay guys, 
it's this. I'm putting it on the screen right now so I don't have to say it. Um, but we call it uh, Sea Holly. And then the variety of it is Blue Star. And we know we love it so much. Most of these things that we have here, they're just single packs. They're like a pack of 25 plants. So it's enough to get us started, get a taste of these things. And then we can decide if we want to add more in the future. But we know we like this. So we got 50. 50 is like going to be a pretty good little bed of them for us. And then the other one that we got is the Echinopsis. That one I know how to say, uh, except for, oh, how do I say this? Veach's blue. Um, and so this, this is really similar in the growth pattern where it like dries really well, it has the blue, except for it's like a palm palm, right? Like where the sea holly is like this weird spike, this is like this fun little palm palm. So I'm excited for those. This one was, uh, Ian is a bad influence and he told me to buy everything, so I bought this. Uh, this is a helianthus, which means this is the same family as a sunflower, but this is a cold hardy perennial. It's called Happy Days and I'm expecting it to look kind of like a smaller sunflower daisy type plant, but it looks really pretty. Um, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to be as a cut flower, maybe. Maybe it's just going to end up being landscaping for us, but Ian said buy everything and I did. <laughs> the other big family of plants that we ordered is we ordered a bunch of grasses. Um, and we ordered specifically the family of cold hardy perennial grasses that are called miscanthus grasses. Um, the plumes, like the flowers, of the grass are a lot more decorative on these varieties that we got. Um, so I'm really excited to see what they look like. I really enjoyed, so a lot of the grass that I was using uh, this year for the dried flowers, I got from my mom. And so I, I really enjoyed using it. I can use it dried. I can also use these fresh in the fall. So we're, we're going for it and they make beautiful hedges. We are not necessarily gonna put this in the flower farm. We're probably gonna use this as like a hedge line along our fence. So this one is, uh, it's a silver feather. Um, and this flower I'm really, really excited about. And then this, okay, so this is the one that Ian is the most excited of, probably of anything in this order, other than I guess, Ian's all, all dinner plate deli obsessed. But this plant gets massive, 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 like 10 feet tall in ideal circumstances. In our area, you cannot grow pampas grass here. It's not hardy enough for how cold our winters get. Um, so, but this plant grows similar to the size that a pampas grass grows, even though it doesn't give that same decorative flower. Um, it, yeah, it just produces this insane amount of plant matter. So we're, we're excited to see what this is gonna be. We're gonna use this as a hedge to try to keep the chickens from digging out underneath the fence. They like to dig their way into the neighbor's yard. So we're, we're gonna set this up as like a hedge line and. I'm, I'm excited for the future of what this is going to turn into. Okay, and then we also have Grisella. Another, another one of those grasses. And then uh, Malapartus. Um, so I ordered them to be distinct looking um, plumes. So they kind of will all contrast a little bit but while still being those very decorative ones. And I think we had, I think we had another variety that we tried to get and it was one that wasn't available this year. But the Gigantus, we're really excited for that one. We also have one of these massive boxes. Wait till you see what's in here. It's pots. <laughs> it's not that exciting, but this is what we're going to pot all those perennials into so that they can grow on for another month before we put them into the ground. Um, they'll be very happy to have this much space. What I have in this box is some raspberry canes. And you might think that this means that I am putting in a fruit orchard or something, but no, what this is, is this is for uh, greenery in bouquets. 
And we have some raspberries on the property now, but what I ordered here is a thornless raspberry. So it's gonna be a lot more, you know, I can grab it like this, it's not spiking me. It's gonna be a lot more ple pleasant to work with, um, you know, not have to worry too much about customers grabbing the bouquets and getting spines. This variety is can be. I originally tried to order Joan Jay and can be. So I had one that was a summer blooming um, and then one that was, you know, like the ever bearing variety. Um, but they were sold out of Joan Jay. I know she's popular, that Joan. Um, but whatever, we'll get started with this. We'll get her next year. We got, we got all the years left. As you may know, I made a video with Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, we'll put a tab up there, where we talked about uh, profitable flowers and she is obsessed with gladiolus. She loves them. Here, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Um, I don't know if my customers are gonna love them as much as her, but you know, hearing her passionately talk about how beautiful and how incredible they are. She suckered me in. I had to buy some. So I got some really fun. Oh, and we got pictures of these ones. Look at these. I got five different varieties and they each are a case of a hundred each. So 500 in total. This one here is Lumiere. Look that the colors on it, that little bit of white too. You know, I'm really, I'm really excited about the ones I got. Oh, this one, you guys. Okay, Zeta, look at that. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a sucker for green flowers. Green, green's my favorite, so green flowers. With that punch of like fuchsia. The, you know, I'm really excited to see what these are gonna be. Oh, we're getting a picture on this one. Okay, this one is Fanny Faction. Um, and, I'll, and I'll throw a picture there up for you guys to see. And then we got Shaka Zula. Look at that rich, rich color with that splattering of white. I mean, even look at the skins on this one, you know, like that beautiful, beautiful coloring. And then Ch Sharkoff, you know, just a beautiful, a beautiful coral. I think that, you know, here they are like together, they're gonna complement each other really nicely. Um, and they're also gonna be colors that work well with the other things that I grow. You know, I do a lot of these like really punchy tropical colors like fuchsias and oranges and greens. And so, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll be able to do something with these no matter what. I'll, I'll do something fun. I'm excited. The other thing, bulb wise that I'm super excited for is I have a bunch of lilies. I bought a bunch of lilies last year. I bought Casablanca and Stargazer and they were absolutely gorgeous. They were incredible. I loved them. Um, but Ian said they were too stinky. He didn't even want to go outside. The whole farm smelled like lilies for, for a week when they all opened up. So he laid down the law, no stinky lilies. But there's a bunch of lilies that actually don't have scent, which is probably not Ian's exciting news to hear. And so I bought a bunch of lilies this year. Um, they're starting to they're starting to spread a little bit, so I'm not going to dig through here to give you the list. Um, I'm going to pull it up on my phone because I bought a lot. I basically I bought every single color that they had of the non-stinky ones. So the non-stinky ones are the Asiatic and then also the LA hybrids. Those are the, the family of the lilies that I got. And so what I got is Forever Susan, Landini, Levi, Purple Eye, Secret Kiss, and then in the LA hybrids, I got, ooh, this one's hard to say, Albufiera, Bach, Bonsar, Dyn Dynamix, Pav Pavia, and then I also got um, Kiss Alodi, which is this just incredible double, and I think it's supposed to be unscented, and then I got one scented one, but it's an OT hybrid. These things get so tall. It's called Table Dance, and I know it might be stinky, but the plan on this one is I'm going to put it at the very back of Ian's new garden, because they can, you know, they can get taller 
than us. They can get up to like six, eight feet tall. They're these crazy, crazy lilies. And I think they're gonna look really pretty when they bloom um, up taller than all the perennials. Uh, and you know, Ian won't have to have them right in his face. They'll be a bit of a distance away. So I can, I can probably get away with a small amount of stink. And so now you've made it. All that we have left is what is on this table. All of these dahlias. And I know, I know you can't wait to hear about these, which is why I'm gonna first talk to you about the canna lilies that I bought because I'm cruel like that. Um, I've never grown these before, but people asked me about these at the seedling sale. So I got a bronze leaf red flowering canna lily. This one is King Humbert red, super classic. And then I wanted to get a green leaf one. Um, and then this one has a yellow flower and it's yellow King Humbert. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to try these out and also to see if our customers like them. I, when I drive around, I mean, these are crazy, huh? When I drive around, I see people having these in their home gardens. You know, they're, they're big, stately, they look tropical. Um, so I'm, you know, we'll see. I, I think, I think this might do well. Okay. But on to the dahlias. I know that's what you care about. What we have here is we have two orders of dahlias. We have the dinner plate dahlias that Ian is obsessed with and that I am not going to grow any. We'll have like one or two. Um, these are for our seedling sale. So we're going to pot these up. We are going to sell them started. They're going to be great gifts for Mother's Day. Um, but I don't have to worry about trying to sell these as a cut flower. They're gorgeous. I love having them in my home garden, um, but they're a lot of work. And then we have the more practical cut flower uh, dahlias. We have these decoratives and we have some of these ball styles. Um, so this is what I am gonna be growing this year. Dahlias made us no money last year. They're a pain in the butt. Um, all flowers must make money. So, <laughs> so we're trying this. We're gonna see if this is the trick, and if it is, then they'll have a place on the farm, um, but they might, they might not. It might be just uh, in the landscaping, they're beautiful. Okay, so let's start with mine because I'm excited about mine. Um, so what I have here is Arabian Night, and this one I ordered because people said this is the most productive and earliest dahlia that they grow on their farm. So that, you know, that pretty much, sold me. I, 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 at that point I was willing to only grow that one. Um, but you know, we gotta, we gotta try a few out just because most people said this was the best. Doesn't mean that I shouldn't also grow wine eyed Jill. Look at the coloring on that. So pretty, huh? And anything that I ordered, people were like, this is an excellent dahlia. I did a lot of research. I asked a bunch of other farmers. And so I was really picky. The, other than this one, this is the only one that people didn't talk about. This is cream de cassis. Um, and I'm a sucker. So I had to buy it because the color on that, that, that one, that one looks incredible. I can't, I can't wait to try that one. Okay. Let's, let's dig through. Okay, here is more of mine, Addison June. So this is a ball style one. Um, beautiful, beautiful color on that though. And then Cornell Bronze. Cornell Bronze is like such a classic. Um, you know, there's tons of the Cornell series. There's a Cornell Red that I, that I if I can get my hands on it, I'd like to try that one out. Um, they didn't have it, <laughs> Van Wert didn't have it. Um, but yeah, you know, and it's funny cause as I've had all these, you know, because they have the pictures, I'm, you know, I'm getting really excited. I think the color palette of these that I have is gonna look really great. Okay, so classic, Petra's Wedding. This is a white ball. Um, the whites are a pain in the butt for me because we get bugs and the white shows bug damage. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. And then I got Wizard of Oz, another ball one, you know, a pretty pink. People said this one, really high production. And then uh, Sylvia, this, I mean, the color. I, this, to me, this is like the color. Anything, anything orange, anything fuchsia, those, those are my favorites. I love, I love the way they like just make everything really pop and punch. Okay, and then 
onto the dinner plates. Look at this. This is Encore. Uh, last year we didn't buy a single yellow. And we actually, and you know, I'm like, eh, yellow, meh. Um, but we had everyone asking, do you have a yellow? Do you have a yellow? So we made sure to get a yellow one this year. And I think that this is, yeah, so this is a giant cactus. So it might be a little bit smaller than the dinner plate, but still like a big punchy one. Um, I, I suspect Ian's going to make me keep one of those. <laughs> He's nodding. Uh, and then we got Fern Cliff Illusion, um, beautiful variegation on this. And I had one in the in the garden last year that that looked kind of like this. Um, it got a little bit bleached out. It, it was just this like faintest kiss of purple. And so I it, I might have been growing that last year and, and liking it and not knowing what it was. Um, and then I got purple tia, tiajo tiajo I don't know something like that tiajo um myrtle's folly this one's my absolute favorite i love this one um yeah it's like it's like crepe paper with like it looks unreal on the plant um ac dark horse i've seen the coloring on this like in this picture it's kind of like a fuchsia color but i've seen other people's have them and they look almost like a deeper richer tone too so i'm i'm excited to see what different shades we can get uh florel classic white you know, I, I actually like the Florel. The Florel did pretty good for um, production for us last year. Um, it, it was just white, so it got like a little bug eaten. Um, but it, it was it was a great garden variety. Bodacious, this is Ian's favorite, first of all, because it has a hilarious 80s name. And second of all, because it's a big, massive variegated. We actually have a bunch of Bodacious saved. It, it was a really good tuber producer for us. Um, and even though I can't keep tubers for the life of me, I actually saved a bunch of the Bodacious. So we'll probably have lots of this in the garden this year. And then Babylon Red. This, I mean, a red, like just simple red flower isn't the type of thing that I would normally swoon over. But these, when they bloomed, they, they were really incredible. Like I, I feel like they, pictures of them don't make them look as exciting and as fun as they actually were in the garden. Okay, and then we wanted more variegated, we wanted more multicolored ones. Um, so we did the bristle stripe this year. This was the two-tone flowers, even though they're not great um, necessarily for me in arrangements. The For home gardeners, they really liked these. So I, I tried to get as many as I could. And then Cafe au lait, classic. Everyone loves a Cafe au lait. So we made sure to get a case of that. And then the last one, the last one is Mystery Day. And we, we had this one last year and, and it was really fun. The, it was very punchy. The white against that, that purpley, pinky color was, was, you know, it was a fun one. So that is everything. There actually was a lot more dahlias that we had ordered. Um, originally, I, th I think there's about a hundred that we didn't end up getting. Cause I think we only have about 300 here. And I, and I keep, I've been like, oh, there's gonna be 400. Um, I, I ordered 400, I didn't lie. <laughs> but uh, the stock, you know, the dahlias, the stock was just a bit limited this year on them. But I'm really excited about what I have on hand. And can you guys imagine what it's gonna look like when these all start going? It's gonna be insane getting them into pots. Um, but I have to let you go because this has already been ridiculously long and I gotta get working. I gotta get the stuff into the pots. Um, it's gonna take me a few days, so I'll I'll see you I'll see you after after I make it through the dark side.